Romans chapter 12, beginning in verse 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice to you, holy, acceptable mm -hmm. unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you, were, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will uh -huh. God. Amen. So these are very well-known verses in Christian circles. It might be the first time you've heard it, but these are very well-known verses. Not to be trans, not to be uh, trans, to be conformed, but to be transformed. So tonight, uh, there's a lot of messages, and that's one thing I noticed through the years. You know, with preaching, you can read a set of scriptures, and there's a ton of sermons just in the, you know, five or six verses. Yeah. And the the challenge that you have when you're when you're preaching or teaching is just to stay on point to one thing. Oh yeah. And so tonight we're going to try. I'm going to do my best to stay on point. Uh, what we're going to look at is we look at these verses in verse 1, which we're going to actually come back to that. Uh, we're going to come back to that. But it gives an exhortation to the believers to submit his or her body as a living sacrifice. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's the challenge that we have. That's the exhortation uh, that is given here by Paul is to, to uh, submit your body. Now, in this era of time, when you're reading scripture, you're going back to what did they think when they read this. Yes. Mm -hmm. So in this era of time... Just about every religion, if not every religion, had some type of sacrificial system involved. Mm -hmm. And so there was some type of sacrifice that was required to appease the gods. Mm -hmm. And even in Judaism, there was a sacrificial system that was there that they offered certain things at certain times. And so everyone reading this would make that connection. Mm -hmm. So when Paul says to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, they, they understood exactly what he meant. Verse 2, which is where we're going to start... It, it actually offers advice to overcome the greatest hindrance to that exhortation, and that's our minds. Mm -hmm. Yes, amen. Mm -hmm. It's our minds. How we think, what we think, uh, preconceived ideas, so forth. And so tonight we want to focus on that. We're going to focus tonight on this aspect of being renewed in our mind. Uh, now before we do that, I want to go back. I really hesitated doing this. But I think I, I, but I, but to get this picture, I want to just, I'm going to, I'm going to dump a lot of information on you. Is that okay? <laughs> I'm going to dump a lot of information on you right here at the first. Because, again, when we talk about our minds, we're going to look at this from a biblical perspective. Mm. All right? We've got to see this from a biblical perspective. So Romans chapter 1, verse 28, the Bible says this. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Mm-hmm. So the Bible says here in Romans 128, Romans 128 is they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. God gave them, so we got they and them in here. Who is the they and them? That's the unredeemed. Uh -huh. The Bible says that they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, and so there was a result. And the consequence was God turned them over to a reprobate mind. Yes. And so to fill in the blanks here, we're not going to spend a lot of time, but you've got to have the background. Is that okay? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Just because we're still getting to know each other. Whenever I whenever I present a sermon or I preach, I try to include a lot of teaching as well as preaching. Okay? okay? Try to give you some information that you can put it together. And so what's the challenge to what's the challenge to being renewed in our mind? Let's go back and see what the Bible says about the mind. So one of the things that the Bible tells us here in Romans 128 is that God gave them over to a reprobate mind, a useless mind. Yeah. So when did Paul write this? Well, Paul wrote this in the first century. So he's writing about something that happened 2,000 years ago. Yeah. Being given over to a reprobate mind is not something that happens now. It's something that's happened 2,000 plus years ago. And what we see in Scripture is age upon age upon age and upon age <laughs> builds, builds with this same cycle. Uh -huh. Let me show you another verse, Ephesians chapter 2. This is another verse yeah. that's pretty familiar with a lot of Christians. It says, where in time past you walked according to the course of this world. You guys see that? You walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that works now in the children of disobedience. Mm -hmm. So what we see in these two verses is we have a lot of it, a lot of understanding as to the human mindset. So the human mindset, number one, we see this. When there's a rejection of God, go back and read Romans chapter 1. When there's a rejection of God, you're trying to change the deity of God. You're trying to substitute God. The consequence yeah. of that is a useless mind. Uh -huh. A mind that will never live up to God's standard. Exactly. 
Now, when that generation takes hold with that mindset, it passes it on to the next generation. The next generation doesn't start fresh with a godly mind. The next generation starts where that generation left off. Yeah. Okay. You guys follow what I'm saying? There's well, an old saying yeah. that goes something like this. Well, one generation will tolerate, the next generation will accept. Yes. And the following generation will practice. Uh -huh. yeah. What is that? It's the reprobate mind. One generation got turned over to useless thinking. The next yeah. generation began to practice it. Yeah. One generation said, said something like this. It's not that big of a deal. Oh, come on now. And when that generation said it's not that big of a deal, then the next generation said, if it's not that big of a deal, then why are we fighting it? Yeah. And then the next generation said, well, why aren't we doing it? And so we see this process that goes from one generation to the next. But we're not talking about the lifetime of people in here. We're talking about 2,000 years plus going back to the beginning of humanity. Yeah. Here we're talking about from the writing of Paul. Yeah. And it's went from generation to generation to generation. And when I say, when I give you all of that information today, I'm giving you that information to tell you this, even as Christians, even though we are Christians, there's absolutely no way apart from Jesus to not fall into the trap of the reprobate mind. Mm -hmm. There's no way. Mm -hmm. Apart from Jesus, apart from the help of the Holy Spirit, and the reason for that is every area of life has already accepted. Come That's on. why when we send our children into the public school systems, and you have a public school system that nowadays is promoting uh, gender fluidity. <clears throat> you guys hear me? It's promoting gender fluidity. Do you know why that is? Because somewhere at some time, somebody said, what's the big deal? And now we're going to have a generation. My grandkids are growing up in a generation. It's accepting something that you and I consider false. How uh -huh. did that happen? Well, how it happened was a mindset happened. In Ephesians 2, put the first part of that verse up there for me again. So in this verse where it says, course of this world. Interestingly, if you look at the Greek word for that word course, it actually trans translates out to ages. It doesn't make sense to me. I look at that and I think, well, that doesn't make sense. How can that be? Well, then I got to thinking about this. So where in time past you walked according to the, now get this, I'm going to replace that word with, with, with ages, the ages of this world. And I got to thinking, I'm 53 years old. I'm 53 years old. And you know, when I was a kid, somebody start your sentence that way, when I was a kid. Yeah. <laughs> when I was a kid, you know, when I was a kid, life was a certain way. When I was in middle school and high school, life was a certain way, and we all had similar values. But the, high, but the middle school and high school kids today don't have the same values that I had when I was middle school and high school. How many of you could say the same? When you're in middle school and high school, how many of you say the kids that I see today aren't like what I was when I was that age? How many of you could say that? You know why that is? Because each of you represent an age. That's right. You represent an era. You represent a generation. And what the Bible says is this. Wherein in time past, you walked according to the quote, the ages of this world. What was going on in your lifetime? And then it becomes an accumulation of. Because what was going on in your lifetime when you was that teenager was what, was going, was what your parents were instilling in you. And so their age was spilling over into your life. And your life then spilled over to your kids. And your kids yeah. are spilling over to the grandkids. But what's happening is this. Because there's a denial of Christ, there's a change in thinking that makes it turned over to useless thinking. And while there was once an era of time where most people went to church, most families went to church, that's not the way it is right now. Mm -hmm. And because it's not that way right now, there is a reprobate mindset that's taking place. And so when Paul writes to the readers and he says, you need to be transformed by the renewing of your mind, what he's saying is this. You can't take that worldly thinking and, and continue to live like that. 
Amen. You've got to get a new mind. You've got to get God's mind in you. Why is that? Because apart from Him, we got to reprobate mind. Amen. When I got saved, when you got saved, the Bible tells us we got to we got a mind of Christ. Amen. Now, when I get the mind of Christ, I've got to choose to think in that mind and act in that mind and live with that mind. Amen. Otherwise, I'm going to revert back to this, right. what I had in time past. Mm -hmm. Amen. And there's not a person in this room, I don't care how old you are, there's not a person in this room that is exempt from this message. That's true. You could be 90, we got anybody 95 years old in here? Right. So you could be 95 years old. <laughs> and still, if you're not careful, you can have a thought that takes you back to your early teen days. Uh huh. That's true. You can be ninety-five years old, and if you're not careful, you can still shrug your shoulders and say, "Really, what does it matter?" And I'll tell you why it matters because God has a standard that's never going to change. Yeah. And one of the things that I want to tell you just about myself, because you guys need to know this, I don't ever preach messages that says you're not good enough, but I always preach messages that say you can always get better. That's Amen. right. There's a big difference. Yes. There's not one person in here that who cannot get better. That That's right. right. That's right. And there's not one of us who can't get better. And if yeah. there's any area of your life tonight for which you think you can't get better, I want to tell you this. That's reprobate thinking. Oh, well, come That's on now. Yeah, come on. Because there's not one area of your life in which God does, God does not have an authority that he can't make you better. Amen. So when we look at the scripture tonight, we're going we're gonna to stay on that premise. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. We're going to stay on that premise. So, the Bible says that we're transformed by the renewing of, of the mind. So let's walk through this process. Titus 3, 5 says this. It's not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us mm -hmm. by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Now, if you go back and you look in Romans 12, 1, it says something similar here. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. In both verses... Yes. It makes reference to the same aspect of God, his mercy. Amen. Mm -hmm. I'm thankful today for the mercy of God. Amen. 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 Church, would you would you put uh, Romans? Well, yeah, let's go there, please. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies mercy. of God, to present your bodies a living a living sacrifice. Church, there is nothing, there's nothing that you have to offer God that's good enough. That's right. Can I get an amen to that? That's amen. True. There's nothing that you have that you can offer God that's good enough. Amen. It's by his mercy that he accepts us. That's right. Yes. That's right. It's by his mercy that we're, that we're accepted by. The Bible that's tells right. us that every righteous work that we do is like filthy rags. Yeah. Just not that's right. So it's by God's mercy. I want you to think about that tonight. How wonderful that is. That we've got a Savior that no matter who you are in this room tonight, he says, I'm welcome on you. Yes. I'm welcome. Thank you, Lord. I know what it's like to sit in church and to feel like you're about this big. <laughs> you look at somebody next to you and you think, man, they do so much better than me. Yeah. You know, as a man, you look at other men in the congregation and you think, man, I can sing. Man, that guy looks so happy. Why, this guy, you know, he seems to have life all together. And then in your private thoughts, you know, life has just been falling apart for you. You know you're struggling with lust. Or you know you're struggling with anger. Yeah. You know you haven't forgiven somebody. You know you just yeah. haven't done all of that. And then yeah. the pastor says to you, offer your body as a living sacrifice. I can't even do that. But I look at this and it says, but by his mercy. That's it. Amen. By his mercy. Lamentations 3, it tells me his mercies are new every morning. Yeah. Aren't you Amen. thankful today that the mercies of God get renewed every day? Amen. And I want to tell you this. You can't exhaust them by the end of the day. Yep. Amen. You guys hear me? You can't exhaust them by the end of the day. It's not like he's got so much. You know what I was getting? You guys might, some of you guys might not understand this, but I want to give the example because of my age. On those gaming systems where you see the life go down, 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 down. You know what I'm saying? That's not how God's mercies work. God's mercies are never going to be able to be exhausted. No matter how much you push him for the day, no matter how much you stress him for the day, you cannot push God's mercy too, too far. Amen. And then the next day, they're new. Mm -hmm. Yes, amen. 
Any parents here ever have carryover from the day before? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. That kid pushed you too far on that day before. Test, attitude, whatever it was, and you wake up the next day, and the hardest thing you can do, mom, is make them breakfast that next day. That's not the way Jesus is. The Bible tells us, the Bible tells us, by his mercy. Here's the thing I want to emphasize to you tonight. When we talk about offering our bodies, it is not about being offering a perfect sacrifice. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible doesn't say, get your body perfect and then offer it. Now, if you've been in church for any length of time, you've heard Old Testament preaching, or you've studied the Old Testament, then you understand from the Old Testament perspective the sacrificial system. And the Bible is very clear in the Old Testament sacrificial system mm -hmm. that you should not offer a sacrifice with a blemish. Mm -hmm. Your sacrifice had to be perfect. Mm -hmm. that's right. But that's not what Paul wrote. Paul did not say, get your body perfect, get your life perfect, mm -hmm. and then offer it. Mm -hmm. What he said was, because of God's mercy, get a new way of thinking and offer yourself to God. Thank you, Lord. Powerful, powerful clause. Yes, amen. What's my new way of thinking? My new way of thinking is the old, the world tells me, my reprobate thinking tells me, just get it all together. Take care of it all. Here's another thing, and this is what the church has done too. Now, maybe not churches here in western Tennessee. But the churches where I was from in St. Louis area, the churches where I was from in Indiana, this, this is what we, we didn't, we never said these actual words, but this is the message that we did. Either we would say, you're, nothing you do is good enough, or we say this, or we have this mindset, and that is, I'll offer all the good parts. Ooh. I'm going to offer all the good parts. Wow. I can sing. So I'm going to join the choir. I'm going to be on the praise and worship team. I'm going to sing a special for because I can sing. I can get to Sunday school. I'm impressed by y'all Sunday school. How many Sunday school classes do you have? Three Sunday school classes? Most churches don't even have one Sunday school class. You guys got three Sunday school classes. That's pretty incredible. Amen. So you know what? You know what the reprobate thinking says? <laughs> I'm trying to balance things out. I better get to Sunday school because that looked good on my record. <laughs> I'm going to go. Now, we're not, this is unusual to have a Sunday night church. But in the days when we used to have Sunday nights and Wednesday nights and Sunday morning, Sunday night attendance could, would increase in correlation to the struggles of people's lives. Am I right, brother? Amen. You know why that is? I know one time you say, well, that's a debt, you know, because they're desperate, they want God. Yeah, that's part of it, but here's the other part of it. There's a bartering with God. Yes. I'm going to do my best. Right. So I'm going to get to church. I'm going to give my tithe. I'm going to sing in the choir. I'm going to go to Sunday school. I'm going to do my best. I'm going to do my best. Church, we got to get that kind of nonsense out of our mind because it's by the work of Jesus. That's it. That's it. Amen. The message that I have for you tonight is this. We do not have to clean up our lives to offer our life. Amen. Amen. And in fact, if we're going to make a true sacrifice to God, and hear me on this, if we're going to make a true sacrifice to God, give him the ugly parts first. Ooh, come on. Amen. Give him the ugly parts first. Yes. When I'm going to offer my body, I'm going to give him the ugly part first. Well, why would you do that? Because I know that's the part that he wants. Amen. I, think the, I think we would say this, that Jesus came to die for my what? What? Sin. For my what? For my sins. Sin. For my sins. Sin. Yeah. Sin. Well, why do I try to hide all my sins from him? Come on. <laughs> why am I trying to hide all my shortcomings from him? Yeah. You know, I would be in a lot better position with God when I come to this place and I realize what Jesus did for me. Jesus is not afraid of my ugly parts. That's right. Amen. Jesus is not afraid of my struggles. No. In fact, Jesus wants them. Yes, Jesus yes, yes. wants those things that are weighing the heaviest on my mind. Yes, I, yes. I see it in the church as one of the greatest obstacles to the lost. 
Because there are people that start churches, and if you're in here, again, as far as I'm concerned, I know I see most of you this morning, but as far as I know, you all are still visiting. I don't know who goes to church here or not. <laughs> so here's the, this is what I'm saying. This is why I'm saying this. So I got this kind of liberty. I have to say this now, but I'm going to be all wrong. <laughs> Just preach, man. Yeah. God wants the ugly things. Yes. Amen. When Paul wrote this exhortation to the Romans, he didn't say give him your good stuff. Mm -hmm. He said give him, give him your whole self. And giving him your whole self, to me, it starts with the worst parts first. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm going to give you my struggle. I know what it's like when I was a young man in the fifth, sixth grade, somewhere around in there. Staying up late one night, my grandparents had this huge satellite dish. Uh -oh. Yeah, it was all over. I found, I found the hardest <laughs> pornography channels that was out there. Ooh. And I did not go to grandma and grandpa and tell them what I found. Um. <laughs> I said this. My grandma and grandpa would never figure out how to do this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I kept it to myself. I shared it with my friends. Mm, mm, mm. I did not realize the seeds of poison that I was planting in my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Instead of 17 years old, I wound up in an illicit relationship. Married at 17 years old. Praise God. Almost 36 years later. Hallelujah. We are, we are an anomaly. We are. We should not have. We should not exist. But for God. That's it. Amen. <laughs> But I'll tell you this, so fifth, fifth grade, that's 10, 12 years old, I was still fighting in the my corner. I started pastoring church when I was 25 years old. I was still fighting. Mm -hmm. I was still fighting it for a long time. Oh, yeah. And I was trying to hide it with all the good stuff that I could. Mm -hmm. But man, I could preach a sermon. Oh, yeah. I could pray somebody's prayer. Yes, you could. I could quote scripture. But in the privacy of my home, I was struggling. And I never offered it to the Lord. Mm -hmm. I didn't say, God, would you take my ugly part? I tried to clean up the ugly parts that I could clean. Mm -hmm. I don't know how old I was and when exactly it was when I came to this great moment with God when I could say, you know, and I could talk with him about the most detailed struggles that I would never verbalize to anybody else. But you know, my father, he heard it. Yes, yes. My father, he heard it. And I think in heaven he said something like this. About time you gave that to me. Uh-huh. Yeah. About time you gave that to me. Amen. Quit hiding that stuff under general confession. Amen. Quit Woo. hiding that stuff under under so so-called or rumor has it type thing. Quit hiding it and bring it to Jesus and offer it up there. That's part of who you are. I want it out of me. Uh-huh. Come on. I want it out of me. I want it off of me. So I'm going to give it to Jesus. Amen. Amen. And it's not just things like pornography. I know that's a pretty big rush. And now understand, I'm trying to tell you a little bit about myself because I just don't want you to be surprised. I also want you to know the work that Jesus did in you. That's it. That's it. Amen. Right. But I also know in churches today, there are other issues that we have to deal with that we don't often mention in the pulpit. Mm -hmm. Things like pride. Mm -hmm. well, I heard a preacher say one time, I've heard a lot of people confess a lot of sins, but I've yet to hear somebody stand at an altar and confess pride. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you know, that's a big problem. Can I get amen to that? That's right. Amen. amen. We have got to learn to offer the ugly parts of our yes. life to amen. God. Because the reality is that's who we are. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. That's right. And our Father knows it already. Oh, yes, yes, He does. Yeah. He knows who we are. Yeah. And the great thing that we have through Jesus because of these mercies is our His mercies are new every morning. And so we're never coming to the point where God says, stop. No. Stop. Mm -mm. I feel like I need to tell you this. I don't know how much we emphasize this in the Pentecostal perspective. Pentecostal perspective, we, we expect immediacy of result. I'm going to go to the altar, somebody's going to lay hands on me, and boom, I'm going to be delivered just like that. Yeah. 
I know what happens that way. My friend that was here this morning, their dad tells a story of back in the 50s, he was sitting smoking a cigarette and drinking beer watching a baseball game. God convicted him, he threw him, threw him away and had, didn't have a drink or smoke ever since then. Yeah, that happens yeah. like that. Yeah. But I also know people that doesn't happen like that. That's all right. Yeah. There's a process. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there might be some of you this morning or this evening that maybe you're in the middle of a process or you're afraid to start the process. And I want to tell you this morning or this evening, I, I don't know what time. <laughs> I want to tell you now. I want to tell you now. Holy Spirit wants to start the process in you. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Holy Spirit, with His mercy, wants to wrap His arm around you and say, "Let's just start this process." Oh yeah. What's my first step, God? Get this. My first step is now. God, help me to change. Amen. My first step is not God deliver me from these desires, these thoughts, this attitude. You're right. My first start is God give me a new mind about it. No. Amen. That's Amen. it. Give me a new mind about it. Yeah. Amen. Because I've looked in this mirror for my whole life and I've thought I'm never going to be this. That's right. I brought this attitude from one relationship to another relationship to another relationship. And everybody's told me it's always me. I'm never going to change. I'm never going to get any different. God, give me a new mind. Amen. Give me a new mind. I look at, you know, here's another, here's another thing. It's, as Christians, we need to, how about doubt and fear? Anybody, anybody ever deal with doubt and fear? You know, those things aren't godly emotions. Those aren't godly emotions. Pastor, that's not a sin, but it's wrong thinking. It's wrong thinking. It leads right. to corruption. Amen. It leads to failure. It Amen. leads to abandonment. You guys hear me this, you hear me this evening? Yeah, Almost said this morning. morning. You guys hear me? <laughs> it's been so long, Gary, since I preached on Sunday night. I cannot get that right in my head. You guys hear me this morning? Listen, I'm going to blame it on these guys up here. It all started back there, and I'm not getting it right yet. <laughs> Great job. Okay, let's see if we can wrap this thing up, huh? Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. Consider this issue. You have to bring yourself. Amen. That's the picture you see. <laughs> you have to bring yourself. God, give me a new way to think about this. Some of you have been told, because of what you're dealing with, what you're going through, you've been given a lot of negative things. About you not being able to change, can't be changed, and all of that kind of stuff. I want to tell you what makes you change. Check that what they think. Mm -hmm. Amen. It makes yeah. you think you can change. There is a danger that we have. And I, you know, I know this is considered an older congregation, but I have yet to meet anybody who's exempt from these kind of struggles. That's it. Amen. Doesn't matter who old you are. That's right. There is a mentality. This, this is real, this is my heart. Man. There is a mentality that has crept into the church that we have to settle for where we are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I do not belong. I don't know what I am. In fact. Yeah. A statement that I've begun within the last six months, and the Lord, and this is something that God is working on me with, and that's this. Your best can always get better. Amen. That's right. That's, right. that's what I believe. Your best can always get better. Yes. Somebody told, I told you guys this, that the last, the last sermon I preached at our church, somebody said, that's the best sermon you've ever preached. My best can always get better. Mm -hmm. Amen. Five years from now, I don't want to be the preacher I am today. I want to be better. That's all right. Amen. Five years from now, I don't want to be the husband I am today. I want to be better. Amen. I don't want to be better. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. 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 I don't want to be the grandpa I am today. I want to be better. You guys hear what I'm 
what I'm saying? Amen. Right, right. Every area of my life. But you know what's happened in Christendom today? All of a sudden, we settled as if this is the best it is. Oh. And you know what happens when you get to that mindset of this is the best it is? You get pursuing that. That's right. Mm -hmm. You get used to where you're at. Yeah. You don't expect anymore. I want to encourage you tonight. Yes. Where does it start? Oh, it does not start any other place than when you say, I want to offer my sacrifice. I'm thankful for what God does in Pentecostal. Yes, amen. Thankful for what God does in Pentecostal offerings. I'm thankful for the move of the Holy Spirit. I, I love to see. I love to see when God drops something and then boom, off they go. Yeah. But you know when that happens, it doesn't happen just so you can experience the fall. It happens so you can experience Jesus. Amen. Amen. That's it. And it doesn't happen just so you can go back to where you were. It Amen. happens so you can raise up and start at a new place. Amen. Amen. And it happens so the next time you come back, you get a new experience, not the same experience. That's right. Amen. You know what we started doing in Pentecostal circles? Is we started expecting the same thing. Mm -hmm. you know, I hope you didn't come to church tonight to expect what we had this morning. I don't want what we had this morning. I want what God has for us tonight. That's right. Amen. 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 That's what I want. I want what God has for us tonight. And so you yeah. know what I got to do first? I don't have to sing louder. I don't have to write out a tithes check. I don't have to shake more hands. You know what I have to do? I have to say, God, give me a new mind with this. Yes, because when I come into church tonight, I am tired. When I come into church tonight, I got my mind on a thousand things. When I come into church tonight, I'm talking about maybe what I've got to do for work tomorrow. God, give me a new mind. That's it. Oh. That's it. And when I come to the altar tonight, it's not about, oh, God, I want this or God, I want this. God, mm -hmm. I, God I want to give you my ugly parts. That's it. I want to give you my ugly parts. I want to give you my bad attitude. I'm going to give you my sinful thoughts. I'm going to give you my struggles. My, is it okay to say to a bunch of church people that sometimes we have sinful thoughts? Is that okay? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. true. You guys acknowledge yeah. that that happens in here? It's true. Oh, yeah. You, there's not a lot of amens there. You guys acknowledge that that happens in this church? Yeah. Does it happen in Western Tennessee? Yeah. It happens to me. I've in Western Tennessee before. Does it happen in Western Tennessee? Yeah. It happens to me. Praise God, his mercies are new every morning. I give yeah. amen to that. Yeah. Yeah. And praise God, let me hear, let me tell you this. Praise God, we're not stuck in it. That's right. Amen. Praise I don't God. have an agreement to him. That's I've right. got an agreement to him. Thank That's you, right. Right. Thank so you, Jesus. So tonight, I want to change. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Change doesn't begin in this pulpit. That's right. Change begins right there in this church. Thank amen. you, Jesus. Change doesn't begin when you change pastors. Change doesn't begin when you get new songs. Change doesn't begin when more people start coming. Change begins when sitting all the way in the back row. There's Cecil back there by the back door. I, I remember Cecil's name, so I can say his name. See, here, Cecil. When Cecil says, when Cecil says, God, and I've been giving you my ugly parts because I want to interact with you. That's right. Amen. All the way up here to this front row, to Julie. No, I'm not going to do it. Don't do it. I'm not going to change. <laughs> God, I'm going to give you my good parts. And all around here, this is the presbyter. You know what? Even as presbyters, right? Even as presbyters. Because I want to go back to what I said at the beginning. It's not that we would say we're not good enough. Want to reject that mindset from the church. Because with Jesus, I am good enough. Don't tell me. Because of Jesus, I am good enough. You can pick my life apart all you want, but you will never penetrate the righteousness of Jesus until I turn around. Amen. Never. I am good enough. But I want to be blessed. That's right. Amen. Now I want to be blessed. 
There's areas of my life that I don't reflect Christ properly. When I come to the altar, I'm not coming to the altar because I need a charge. I'm not coming to the altar because I need an emotional uplift. I'm coming to the altar because I'm giving to God my ugly. I'm giving to God my, my adverse thoughts. I'm giving to God the gap. And I'm saying, God, would you take it and pull me in? Pull me in! Because tomorrow i got to go to work and I want to be Jesus at work. Because tonight i got to go home and my marriage is falling apart. But I want to be Jesus there. Because my kids don't want to know who you are. They don't want to hear about you. But i got to be Jesus there. Because i got a diagnosis that tells me that I'm dying and I want to be Jesus. Mm -hmm. I'm giving you my ugly. I'm giving you my gaps. I'm giving you my shortcomings. Yes, that's it. Amen. And when I offer myself in this altar, there's a consuming of me, but there's a filling of me. Holy Spirit, fill me. Holy Spirit, God. Holy Spirit, fill parts of your body, parts of your mind that you are unwilling to give to Him. Jesus. How can Holy Spirit take over parts of your life, parts of your mind that you're unwilling to turn to Him? It begins first with salvation. We have been off the call just a moment, but it begins first with salvation. Again, I jokingly say, I don't know who, I don't care if you guys will be here every Sunday. I don't know. But I ask this every sermon that I preach. Do you know Jesus as your personal Savior? Actually, I say this most often. Are you in a healthy relationship with Christ? I like that. I was talking with my nephew one time. He was not knocking the door of the church in probably 15 years. He says, Uncle Jeff, he says, I pray every night. Your Aunt Julie and I, we've been married just a few years back. So we've been married over 30 years. I said, what if I was a truck driver? And I was gone 360 days a year. But I called and talked to your Aunt Julie every night for 10 minutes. How would our relationship be? Hmm. Probably not good. Well, we'd still be married, but how would our relationship be? Ah, come on, that's good. Probably not very good. I said, so what do you think? Talking to God 10 minutes a night is going to be a relationship. Oh. Yeah. See, I think, I think there are a lot of people, there, there's a lot of people who are saved. It's not my, it's my can't judge that. But one of the things that God has really put on my heart to stress is how important a healthy relationship is. Because there are a lot of people in Christian churches today, there are a lot of people in Pentecostal churches today, you are saved, but because you're not in a healthy relationship, you're not enjoying the benefits of salvation. Right. So tonight, if you're not in a healthy relationship with Jesus, or maybe you're not saved at all, I want to encourage you to think about that relationship with service. This is what I want you to do. At some point tonight, if you've made that decision for him, I'd like you to come tell me that you made that decision for him. I want to ask everybody if you would stand with me this evening. Hey, Gary, you want to come okay this morning with the board coming up? Okay. All right. Any member of the board who is comfortable coming to the altar to pray, can you join me up here?
commitment to Jesus and offer that to him. Some of you need a, re a recommitment, a reconnection to God. I want to ask you tonight if you would bring that to him. And this is what I want you to do. The board is up here, and they're ready to pray. I'm going to come around and pray with people too. But this is what I want you to do. Would you just step out front of the altar? Stand in front of one of these guys and let these guys pray with you. Now, a lot of people came in tonight. We have a great church this morning. Let's have a great church tonight. The great church is about the preaching. The great church is about what the great church talks about. God, thank you for coming up. You're coming up Start moving out right now. Start moving out right now. This morning, God bless you. Thank you all. Everybody, start moving out right now. You want prayer? Any reason in your life right now? Start moving out. Come on. We're offering it up to God this evening. We're offering it up to God this evening. Maybe you're sick and you need healing. Bring that sickness and offer that up to God. Just want to know him better. So everybody right now, raise up your prayers to God. Let's